Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, and Kakwadash. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, who the world he calls God. In his name in Hebrew means he exists. And Yahweh Shah's name is the only begotten Son, who the world he calls Jesus Christ. And his name in Hebrew means he delivers by Shemus in the name. Rekakwa, that's the Holy Spirit. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone of the world. Peace and blessings unto the share. I can just push forth in the truth throughout the four corners of the earth. I want to say shalom to you, brothers. Keep pushing. And a double shalom unto the Israelites just looking like the other nations and the Shagwatim. I want to say shalom to you, brothers and sisters as well. My name is The Wild from JMS Line, St. Louis Camp. And I'm coming back at it with another video. And this video, I'm mean, entitled it, The Scriptures Don't Lie. A shameless woman should be counted as a dog. All right, so none other than the so-called black woman, you know, we call it the, the end of, which is the biggest whore on earth as of right now. Um, according to prophecy and according to their blessing, you know, to be sexually liberated. The deal that they made with Esau, Edom, the serpent of the garden. Okay. And it's being uh, played out in uh, our current life. All right. And we see it. And I mean, it's evident that the scriptures is true. So let's read the caption. OnlyFans rapper, NLE Chopper, takes fellow OnlyFans artist Suki Hana and viral rapper Sexy Red out for a walk. All right, so out for a walk, like they what? Like they damn dogs, okay? And the scripture says, what? A shameless woman should be counted as a dog. So let's start off with that scripture. So this is Ecclesiastes. It's lucky. 26, 25. A shameless woman should be counted as a dog, but she that is shamefaced we're free to Lord, right? So a shameless woman should be counted as a dog. Okay, so what's a female dog? A bitch, you know? And so these so these two women right here are, are, are two bitches, you know? Getting walked, two dogs on their knees and, you know, on all fours. All right, fake hair, fake eyelashes, tats every damn wear. Um, little to no clothing. All right, and this is what you Israelite women are, okay? And that's why the Lord is going to destroy majority of our women is because they they doing things like this, okay? And this ain't a woman bashing video or nothing like that. It's just bringing out the facts, okay? Because you Israelite women, starting off the so-called black woman, you the least desired woman on the planet, okay? And that's statistics. So she want to bring up numbers and a lot of you women don't believe in the Bible. Well, who wrote that? Man, man did this, man did that. Well, man created everything. Okay. We're well, starting off with Yahweh, who was a man. <laughs> you know, created um, created his son and his son and 144,000 created everything that, that, that you see. Okay. And the man made inventions, you know, which it all goes back to the heavenly father because the lord put the spirit in man to, to do so okay to build and create to make inventions to make life easier okay but i just wanted just to show some examples of uh righteous women in the scriptures so this is uh first samuel and I'm gonna start at um, chapter one and verse eight. Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her Hannah, Why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better than thee than ten sons? All right. Verse nine. So Hannah rose up after that day, Salaki, after they had eaten. 
and Shiloh, and after they had drunk, now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me and forget not thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man child. Right, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said to her, How long will thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunken neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. All right, so yeah, she was praying because she was barren. Okay? Because the women of the ancient world, they um, knew that their purpose was to what? Was to bear children. You know, that's what you was created for. That's the number one reason that you was created for was uh, procreation, to be a wife. All right, to serve a man. And the whole reason why the Israelite man was created was to serve the Heavenly Father, to serve our husband. Okay? So, um, so she prayed, and so she conceived, right? And she uh, brought forth Samuel. Right, so the Samuel was in Nazareth. And, um, And this is so like here. And this is uh after she buried Samuel. Matter of fact, she'd probably get there. Just uh, so you Akim and Akwati out there can see. Yeah. It says I'm gonna start. I'm gonna just start at verse 16 again where I left off. Count not thy handmaid for a daughter of Belium, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou asked of him. And she said, Let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. And they rose up in the, er, in the morning early and worshiped before the Lord, and returned and came to their house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Right, so uh, so she conceived. Right. And this is what the Lord gave her. Because that was the only child that she had at the time. So, so the Lord, the Lord gave her more children. Cause this is First Samuel two and twenty one, and the Lord visited Hannah, so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before the Lord, right? So I believe she had what six in total. Okay, so she had Samuel, and she had uh, three more boys. And two daughters. It might have been five. This might have been our children. You know? Because uh, if you really believe in your how about Shimei Ashar and uh, ask something for him in sincerity of heart, hey, the Lord will give it to you because the Lord is faithful. You know? And this is just uh, examples of uh, righteous women in the, in the scripture. So let's go to our foremother, uh, Rebecca. This is uh, Genesis 24 and 15. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that, behold, Rebecca came out who was born to Beth Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was fair, 
was very fair to look upon, a virgin, neither had any man known her, and she went down to the well to fill a pitcher and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my lord. And she haste and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels. And so they have done drinking. All right? So that was her attitude. Now how now how many times you brothers you done asked a nigga woman for help in some form or fashion? You might have asked her for directions or something. And then she just, you know, just brush you off or just act like you don't exist or like a nigga, why you talking to me type personality. Alright. So kind. But she had the total opposite. You know, she you know, scripture says, well, she she made haste. Alright? And she hasted. Verse 20, and emptied her pitcher in the trout or trough and ran again into the well to draw water and drew for his camels. And the man wondering at her held his peace to whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. Right. So, and that's uh, the attitude that she had, okay, was um, a real humble attitude, you know. And that's the type of women that the men of the Lord should, uh, if you do pursue a woman, you know, the scripture says, you know, it's better um, to abide even as Paul, because Paul was a single man. And he, um, and he, all this time was dedicated to Yahweh by Shemi Shai. Okay, so it's better to be like that than, than to even have a mate. But if you do have a mate, you know. You didn't sin. You now, if a woman lay with a man, she has no sin. Because uh, sex is marriage. I like these Christians like to go against, okay? So let's get another one. So this is Judith. So this is Judith 10, verse 1. Now, after that, she has ceased to cry unto the God of Israel and made an end of all these words. She rose where she had fallen down and called her maid and went down into the house in which she abode in the Sabbath days and in the feast days and pulled off the sackcloth which she had on and put off the garments of her widowhood and washed her body all over with water and anointed herself with precious ointment and braided the hair of her head and put on a tire upon it, right? And put on her garments of gladness wherewith she was clad during the life of Manasseh, her husband. And she took sandals upon her feet and put on her bracelets and her chains and her rings and her earrings and all her ornaments and decked herself bravely to allure the eyes of all the men that should see her. All right, so yeah, so after she was praying, you know, uh, she put on her garments. You know, she basically got uh, dolled out. Okay. To go and um, seduce their general and chop his head off. Okay. So this is a woman that was beautiful on the inside and the out. And that's what you Israelite women, you sisters should uh, strive to be like. Instead of like these damn whores, man. Because you had the, the elder Manatee Zakbak. Um... You know, he did a video called uh, Israelite Hoochies, okay? And um, you women out there, you shouldn't be like that. You know, it's okay if you, you know, yeah, you might think that you sexy or whatever. You know, you got a body on you or whatever. But it's not it's not the time to be showing your body like that, you know? Because um, the so-called white man, he made a society that's just based off of, just based off attention, man. Does everybody just want to be seen and heard and especially women like with this attention shit, man. Like they always say well, attention is currency, you know, because you women, you getting paid from OnlyFans just by showing your body, just by just, just, just by having a fat ass. All right. It's not supposed to be like that. All right. So let's uh, show Judith 9. And Judith fell upon her face, put ashes upon her, and uncovered the sackcloth with which she was clothed. 
And about the time that the, that the incense of that eating was offered in Jerusalem in the house of the Lord, Judah cried with a loud voice and said, O Lord, power of my father Simeon, because she was a Simeonite, to whom thou gavest a sword to take vengeance of the strangers, who loosed in the girdle off a maid to defile her and discovered a thigh to her shame, and polluted her virginity to reproach, for thou hast said it shall not be so, and yet they did so. Wherefore thou gavest their rulers to be slain, so that they died their beard and blood, being deceived, and smote as the servants with their lords, and the lords upon their thrones, right? Because, you know, she reminiscing, you know. Scriptures talk about what was written the four times, written for our learning, okay? So you got to look at the examples in the scriptures and what the Lord uh, helped our people, and he uh, saved our people. Okay, and this woman, she was, uh, and she had plenty of faith. All right. So this is, um, Judith, let me see if I can find it. Judith 8 and 9. Now, when she heard the evil words of the people against the governor, that they fainted for lack of water, for Judith had heard all the words of Osias had spoken unto them, and that he had sworn to deliver the city into the Assyrians after five days. Then she sent her waiting woman that had the government of all things that she had to call Osias and Shabriz and Trumus, the ancients of the city. And they came unto her, and she said unto them, Hear me now, O ye governors of the inhabitants of Bethulia, Beth or Bethuel. For your words that ye have spoken before the people this day are not right, touching this oath which are, which ye made and pronounced between Yahweh and you, and have promised to deliver the city to our enemies, unless within these days the Lord turn to help you. And now who are ye that have tempted Yahweh this day and stand instead of Yahweh among the children of man. And now try the Lord Almighty, for you shall never know anything. For you cannot find depth in of the heart of man, neither can you perceive the things that he thinketh. Then how can you search out Yahweh that made all, all these things and know his mind or comprehend his purpose? Nay, my brother, and provoke not the Lord our power to anger. For he will not help us within these five days. He had power to defend us when he will, even every day, or to destroy us before our enemies. Right. Do not bind the counsel of the Lord our power, for for Yahweh is not as man, that he may be threatened. Neither is he as a son of man, that he should be wavering. Right. So, I mean, like, you can't put a timeline on, on Yahweh by Shemiah or Shah. The Lord going to save us, he going to save us. If he going to destroy us, he going to destroy us. Right. But lucky for them i ain't gonna say lucky but um but uh but it was in the lord's plan that he was gonna save uh the, the israelites jerusalem okay and he did okay so that was a woman of faith all right so you women you gotta take heed because hey good luck <laughs> A lot of these women in the very near future, they're going to die horrific deaths, man. Getting thrown off buildings and ate and sex trafficked. You know, a gang, you know, a gang bang. You know, it's not going to be the kind that you like either. A lot of you damn whores fantasize about shit like that. You know, I had this one at this time. You know, I had that nigga woman. We seen that, um... I said, yeah, I, yeah, I was on my back. It was like about 50 dudes in the room. So, yeah, kind. And that's the one without shame, man. You know? Because that's, that's not going to exist. And uh, it's not going to exist in the kingdom. You know? This uh, this this whoredom of uh, of our women, man. And I don't know about you, Aki, but, man, I'm, I'm tired of hoes. All right, I'm sick of looking at them. I'm sick of really talking about them. And the only reason why I talk about it because you know I have to. 
That's my job to call out wickedness. But other than that, I really don't even want to even mention you hoes, for real. But I got to, so I came out there can be can can uh, be aware. If you do decide to deal with a woman, or if you um, or if you a woman that's trying to be righteous, okay? Because as many as many examples. Yeah, it says. This, this is Susanna. There dwelt a man in Babylon called uh, Joachim. And he took a wife whose name was Susanna, the daughter of Chelsius, a very fair woman, and one that feared the Lord. Right, so a very fair woman. And on top of that, she feared the Lord. Because it's one thing to have beauty on the outside. And uh, you ugly as hell on the inside. And, 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 and we done seen it. You know, seen women that look very, very good on the outside, but got low self-esteem, you know, always need attention, always need some damn superficial shit, some Jordans, a, a damn bag, some stupid ass heels, you know, all this chrono stuff, man. Okay, all this superficial shit that, that you really don't even need, man. You need to get you a woman that's content with, like, with what she have, you know? She don't, she don't have to have the flies gear or whatever, you know? Like, just as long as you, you know, happy. Because you know, a lot of these women, they suffer from, what, low self-esteem. Okay? Okay. says uh so Susanna 42 it says then Susanna cried with a loud voice and said oh everlasting God or power thou knowest the secrets and knowest all things before they be thou knowest that they have borne false witness against me and behold I must die whereas I never did such things as these men have maliciously invented against me and the Lord heard her voice Therefore, when she was led to be put to death, the Lord raised up the Holy Spirit off a young youth whose name was Daniel. Right? So, uh, right, so the Lord heard her. And, and that takes faith to call upon the uh, Lord because you got to believe that he is in the first place. Okay? Because that's what the Lord is looking for. The Lord is looking for faith. You know? The Lord is looking for faith. And in majority of these uh, Israelites, hey, he not gonna find majority of these women. He not gonna find it. Okay. This is uh, Luke eighteen and seven. And shall not Yahweh avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto them, though he bear along with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Right, so that's a rhetorical question. You know? Because most people don't have faith. Most people say they believe in Yahweh, Shemiah, but they really don't. Okay? And it shows through what? They, they, their actions. Okay, but uh, kind of, let's, let's get one more, then I'm gonna close it up. So, this is um, I think it's first Peter. I always get it mixed up, slucky. Might be second, right here, right. First Peter 3 and 5. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in Yahweh adorn themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Right. So, yeah. So, subjection. 
mean, it's uh, un- under rule to their own husband. You got a lot of women that that don't even take their husband serious. You know, they look at their pastor as they uh as they lord. You know, and that's disrespectful as hell. You know, because uh, your husband that's the closest man to you. You know, he he the ones that's uh that's impregnating you. You know, if you can get pregnant. You know, but then a lot of you women are having sex with your pastor. You know, because, you know, these pastors are adulterers. And these women are adulteresses. And these pastors are adulterers. What kind? Yep. And so, verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge. Giving honor to the wife as unto the weaker vessel. And as being heirs together of the grace of life. That your prayers be not hindered, right? So you got to deal with with uh, your wife according to knowledge, man. Okay, because you got to know that she's weaker than you. You got to know that uh, that the Lord is dealing with her through you. You know you can't try to turn into an Israelite woman or whatever. You got to just make sure that you follow the scriptures, and you got to uh, like righteously order her around. You know. Uh, uh, you know, hey, hey, you a Jake, man. You better learn how to supplant. Hey, baby, can you do this for me? And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm finna go. Hey, baby, can you make me something to eat? You know, I'm, you know, I've been working all day. You know, that's how you gotta talk to her. And, yeah, of course, you know, you gotta spend a little money here here and there for entertainment if y'all wanna go out to the movies or whatever. But, Kai, you gotta deal with them according to knowledge, you know. You gotta give her... The ride when she needed. Vice like first, she gotta give you the box. Okay? But I'm in it off on that and I want us to show on.